Hello everyone, today I'm sharing with you part 3 of how to benchmark internal pay with market pay for multiple jobs. So in the previous two videos, I've shown you how to create uh, the market pay range for different jobs um, in different job families and job levels. Um, and in the second video, I showed you how to add the internal employee data into the range so you can um, compare the internal employee pay against the market pay range. So in this uh, third video, I'm going to show you a uh, one step further. So um, think about this scenario. So now your client has access to this table. He look at it uh, and he's wondering, okay, now I know that like, for example, for senior analyst, my data and um, my, my senior analysts are paid lower. My managers are paid lower. How about my top talents? Like, for example, if all those people who are paid below the market are poor performers, then I probably don't care as much. But then let's say if that those employees are the people that are top performers, then um, that's going to be a stronger case for me to know, okay, we have a pay issue here and then we should take action to fix it. So let's say you have an employee data table like this, and then you have identified who are the top talents for your uh, population. Um, what your client want to see is probably something like this, where they can choose. If they choose to show the charts for all employees, then they can see all those dots. And then if they choose chart for top talents, then they would only see the dots for top talents. And then they can see, okay, are they paid competitive against the market? So they can change the view um, right on spot and see the instant result. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's start from um, where we left off for uh, last time, where uh, we have this chart. So actually, in order to uh, create what we uh, have uh, showed you, uh, let me first um, change the chart size a little bit. Um, so the first thing I need to do here is to create those selection window here. And you do that by going to the developer tab um, and go to the insert. So if you don't know how to get to the developer tab, I have a video on uh, get uh, getting macro ready for your uh, for your um, uh, video uh, for your Excel, and then I have it shown on the top right hand side, uh, and you can see how you can get to the developer tab. And then when you go there, insert, um, and you need to insert an option bottom. This one, and uh, insert option button. Yep. Yeah. So when you have this cross uh, sign, it means that you can drag it and leave um, a button there for um, yeah something like this for your um, change. And then when you have this ready, right click. Um, and then you can actually see uh, format control locked. Oh, no, no, that is actually not the kind of option button that we're looking for. So you actually need to go to developer tab and then go for option button form control. Uh, and then go here. Uh, and then when you right click, you can see add a tax and then you can see the format control. So first let's add the tax and then basically you want to show what the option is about. And this option is about uh, chart for all employees. Yep, let's make this ready. Uh, you may need to drag and show it a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, another thing you need to do is, is to right click and form control. And it's going to bring you to the form control like this. 
and then basically you need to go to the control tab cell link and then you link to a blank uh, cell on your spreadsheet let's say for our case it's a four remember this cell um, it's gonna be useful later on okay so now after you do that you see there's a one um, in the cell just ignore it uh, and then let's do another one so basically copy the um, button you have and then paste and then you have another bottom there and then this is again where you go in and this is the button that you said like i want chart for top talent so you want to be able to do it in a way that when you select this uh bottom uh, this option um all the top talent people will show yeah, so you can make it like this as well. Uh, so now let's say if for format control, also make sure it's linked to A4. And actually, you see when you check this option, it has two in the A4 cell. Okay, so this part um, you have set up. And then now the key part, uh, step, next step is to set up the column position. So as you can see from the last video, we have found uh, the column position for, uh, based on the job level and job family. Uh, basically from the market uh, data here, we still hold that too. Um, but what we also want to show for this, uh, for this case is the column position. Oops. Um, the column position for top talents. So you need to add another column, say uh, column position for top talent. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically those two will be linked to uh, your, to your um, chart here. So for example, now uh, we have, we select to chart for talent. Um, and this is when you only want to show the top talent people, right? So what you would want to, um, the way you would want to build up the um, column here is basically say, if, um, Um, actually, if uh, go back here, A4, and then you need to make it absolute reference equals one, which means that it's selecting the chart for all employees, then you don't show anything. So there's a formula NA bracket, uh, which means that you don't show anything. Um, if it's two, and our formula logic here is that if um, this is two and then another bracket, if the selection is two, which means that we are selecting um, chart for top talent. And we also want to hold it to that um, those uh, we have the top talent for those people. Um, and I just realized we don't have the top talent column yet. Uh, so, okay, so let's hold on to this. Uh, and then let me add the top talent column here. Let's add the top co uh, talent column here. Okay, so now you can um, continue to write uh, this formula. So we want to have an AND formula, which is that, okay, if the option is showing two and um, this cell is showing yes, then we are showing the column position. Uh, which is actually uh, we look up an analyst uh, and data analytics and then you go back to uh, where we have selected uh, the position 
and then also make sure it's an absolute reference uh, to and then close the bracket and then close all your if functions um, and here I notice that you see my and formula I actually did not close it so I need to close it um, and I'm also saying like here if this is true then we look up otherwise uh, we don't want to show anything so it's still going to be n a and then let's close all the brackets yeah okay so what happens when you scroll uh, when you copy the formula down so you can see that only the column with um, top talent flag has a column position and only when you have have um, a, a position that your um, your salary uh, dot will show up if you don't if you have na this dot would not show up so this is actually the way we want and then we actually want to also change the formula for the first column because this time um, actually uh, when we so this is what we are trying to build and then actually when we build for all employees we only sh want to show the ones for all employees and we don't want to show the ones for top talents right so uh, we need to go back and then revise this formula in the way that um, we are saying here uh, if uh, a4 is equal to 2 which means that only showing the top talent then we don't show anything Otherwise, um, because we want all the employees, we're showing all the numbers, um, and then we close the bracket. So basically, um, when you have this formula on, and when you select one, um, it should still show everything. But then when you actually select it into top talents, um, and you can see nothing is showing here. And the reason for that is that we haven't built the data theories for um, top talents yet, which we are doing right now. So um, now what you need to do is go to select data. Um, and we remember how we add uh, those two um, uh, data series there. Let's add two more, um, one being uh, the top talent for IT services and then the X uh, series needs to be uh, the column that we just built which is from this row down select everything um, and you have to make sure sometimes um, you have to make sure your data is absolutely accurate and then for the Y series make sure you select all the ones with IT services and you have only the base pay there so now you have created this one and then basically you can see um, you can already see the dots on here right so let's continue to create the ones for um, data analysis so let's name it as TT uh, top talent DA um, data and analytics and then let's go back to the employee data to select the columns for those people yeah uh, and the salary um, and uh, actually here you go so actually after we selected data uh, it's already showing here and let me change the color to something lighter uh, so you can see the um, dot more easily and let's change it to orange and then let's say no uh, dot okay yeah so you can tell this is actually how you show the top talents and then uh, if you flip this back to all employees you would see 
the data for all employees. And then you can toggle for different views. Um, and if you find this um, this changing cell disturbing, uh, you can make it to a lighter color. You can widen it, uh, make it white so no one sees it. Uh, but then just make sure you lock it or hide it. So uh, if someone else is working on your um, chart, they wouldn't delete it. Um, so that messed up your uh, table here. Um, OK, so this is how we do um, a different view for market benchmarking reports for top talents. Um, and I hope you find it helpful. If you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any question, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.